Welcome to RLA's 20th Annual Conference and Expo. Joining me is Claudia from EAL Green. Claudia, thank you so much for being here today. Tell me about EAL Green and your role. Thank you so much for inviting me to tell us um, together a story about EAL Green. We are a non-profit organization based in Chicago. We are 42 years old and we have been in the business of reverse logistics, which is the reason we're here, with a very unique business model that captures value of surplus and excess inventory materials by converting those products into scholarships for students that have financial need. And that unique purpose of the product allows colleges to save money which then is passed on to students as a discount on the cost of attending that institution. So it revolutionizes the way we think about waste, reverse logistics, and surplus materials to create social impact and change lives. And what a great initiative. Are, are enough companies um, planning ahead and thinking about education just like this? Great, great question. Um, Companies are planning, are using data in every aspect of their business, supply chain particularly. I think your question is interesting because there has been this disconnect between the business world and education, and that has been well documented. Our goal in enabling students to gain access to an education is precisely to bridge that gap. These individuals gain employment, they get a degree, they learn the science of supply chain, logistics, and they do that through a degree at a college or a university. Our hope is to close that loop, just like the circular economy, but enabling people to fulfill their potential. We've seen here at this event that education is an important topic. We've, we've seen Rich Bulger's book out, sure. um, other professors that are here. So it's something that the Reverse Logistics Association are really trying to push. Absolutely, I would agree with you. And one way they they're doing this is by expanding curriculum. So in universities now there will be a degree in reverse logistics, which a few years ago did not exist. But more importantly, I believe that companies want to do the right thing. And surplus materials allow them to do that at very low cost. More importantly, employees who work in those companies that really do the right thing are more motivated, they're more engaged, and they're proud to work for a label that is doing the right thing with their surplus. Mm -hmm. And Claudius, it was you that, that did one of these first um, courses many years ago. Tell uh, us about that. Sometimes we are inside a story and we don't really know where that story will go. So I am the first student that ever received a scholarship created by this interesting exchange of the value of a surplus material for a scholarship. EAL Green was founded by two entrepreneurs. Many are here today represented with a good idea and they didn't know where that good idea will go. They did find the first corporate donor, W.W. Granger, a large distributor of maintenance repair um, materials that believed in this idea. And they also partnered with a very, very small school in Chicago called North Park University. And they needed a student that was in the right place at the right time to benefit from this concept. Mm -hmm. I was selected to be the first student to receive a scholarship from EAL Green. I studied economics, I got my start in finance, and 29 years ago, I went back home to the home that gave me the opportunity to change my life. Five years ago, we became EAL Green to emphasize the sustainability aspect of the work that we do, and I was honored to be named the first ever CEO of the company. Wow, well, huge congratulations. What an achievement. Thank you. Now, we spoke about sustainability. What are some of the other big challenges that we face in the industry as a, as a whole at the moment? Uh, the industry is accelerating in terms of the opportunities, also the challenges. We talked about a lot of the economic shifts that are happening, um, the rise in returns with the success of e-commerce, the rise in challenges in the supply chain with issues like pandemic, onshoring, nearshoring, changes in the industry. Yesterday I had a speaker who I believe was very eloquent in identifying one of the biggest challenges. And he said it, it's a challenge of unlearning some of the things that we're used to thinking. Uh, let's remember that this 
context of supply chain and reverse logistics lives in this new world of the circular economy. Mm -hmm. Looking at how do we change from going linear, which is we make things, we use things and we waste, to now closing that gap and rethinking about things like waste is one of the biggest challenges. Mm -hmm. Because when we rethink and we pivot and we can imagine a world in which we can continue to care for each other with things that previously may have been considered destined to go to the landfill and they can now go to be reused to help somebody in need. And how does the Reverse Logistics Association help you overcome those kind of challenges? Excellent question. I was waiting for that question because when you think about the size of the economy in the United States and the many players, it is very difficult for some of the smaller ones to gain access to that community. So I would sum summarize that what the Reverse Logistics Association has done for EAL, we became a member, we became a bronze sponsor. And because we became a member, we then began to learn about the industry uh, with like training wheels, if you will, mm -hmm. because you're not alone, you're not walking on doors, although we have done that, but it gives you a community, number one. Number two, uh, in 2022, EAL was very proud to receive the award on sustainable supply chain practices. So receiving an award and a recognition by an industry leader has been incredible valuable to us and number three we made friends we know people in the community and it's a lot of fun mm -hmm. because you belong and when you belong you feel accepted and I think that for anyone in business it's about being able to walk in a room and know that somebody there is going to offer you a cup of coffee or to sit with them and chat yeah. you're not invisible anymore if you're part of the RLA and b being part of a community yes is, and a family actually Correct. some people have said and that's what we um, uh, receive from the RLA and we know that we also give because in any membership organization you have to work to get your value and that's why we enjoy being part of the community. So we know that they support you obviously in, in these times. How, how do you offer your the other members? Um, what, what's the benefit for them seeing you a, guys here? A, a number of things. It's incredible opportunities that you may, for example, this very moment here to be able to tell your audience the story. So what other members do, they connect. They say, Claudia, you should try to speak to other members in the community. They make introductions, they create opportunities. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Well, congratulations and thank you so much for your time, Claudia. It's lovely to thank see you. Thank you. Thank, thank you very you. much. And thank you for watching IDX TV, proud media partners here at RLA in Vegas.